Welcome back to the third part of this week's reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, TLV, the Tree of Life version. This is the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We are about to read the final chapter in the book of John. 21, chapter 21, fish for breakfast with the risen one. After these things, Yeshua revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now here is how he appeared. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of, of Cana in the Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two of the other disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. We're coming with you too, they said. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. At dawn, Yeshua stood on the beach, but the disciples didn't know that it was Yeshua. So Yeshua said to them, Boys, you don't happen to have any fish, do you? No, they answered. He said to them, throw the net off the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they threw the net and they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Yeshua loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tied his outer garment around him for he was stripped down for work and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat from about 200 cubits offshore, dragging the net full of fish. So when they got out onto the, the land, they saw a charcoal fire with fish placed on it and bread. Yeshua said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net to the shore. There were 153 fish, many of them big, but the net was not broken. Yeshua said to them, come have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you, knowing it was the Lord. Yeshua comes and takes the bread and gives it to them, and likewise the fish. This was now the third time that Yeshua was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Love restores Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Yeshua said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. He said to him, Take care of my sheep. He said to him a third time. Now remember, Simon Peter denied Yeshua three times. So this is love restoring Peter. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him for a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Yeshua said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen. I tell you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and carry you where you did not want to go. Now this, he said, to indicate by what kind of death Peter was going to be glorified, was going to glorify God. And after this, Yeshua said to him, follow me. Peter turned around, seized the disciple following. This was the one whom Yeshua loved, who also had reclined against Yeshua's chest at the Seder meal and said, Master, who is the one who is betraying you? Seeing him, Peter said to Yeshua, Lord, what about him? Yeshua said to him, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So he was also letting them know um, what was going to happen to them in, 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 a, in a sense. Therefore, this saying went out among the brothers and sisters that this disciple would not die. That would be John. Yet Yeshua did not say to him that he would not die. But if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? Well, we know John did die, but he didn't die in the same manner that uh, the other disciples did. He wasn't martyred. He died of old age. John's witness. This is the disciple who is an eyewitness of these things and wrote these things. We know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Yeshua did. 
if all of them were to be written one by one, I suppose not even the world itself will have room for the books being written. And that is the end of John. And we have done the four Gospels. Next week we are going to begin um, the book of Acts, which is the final book in the Basara, the good, the good news. Um, we are going to do the introduction and chapters 1 through 10 of Acts next week. So I'm going to recap. In this week, we read about Yeshua's continued public ministry, but we also saw his private ministry uh, where Jesus, Yeshua, taught humility to the disciples, taught cleansing, taught love, taught comfort, and about his second coming, promises the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, Yeshua taught us to abide in him. Yeshua gives another promise of the Ruach HaKadosh and teaches about the work of the Holy Spirit and also teaches that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Yeshua also prayed for his disciples and he prayed for us as well. In this week's lesson, we also saw how um, Yeshua raised Lazarus from the dead, glorifying God, which was also a precursor to his resurrection. And John recorded the new birth and the conversation. Also, we talked about that last week, and that was in chapter three, you know, of being born again. Yeshua promised the Holy Spirit, whom he would send after he ascended into heaven, and promised that the Holy Spirit also known as the Comforter, would come from the Father. The Holy Spirit always glorifies Yeshua and not himself. The Holy Spirit is also our teacher, guide, and comforter. Um, the Holy Spirit is, the, is another helper, namely one of the same kind as Yeshua, thereby extending the ministry of Yeshua to the end of this age. So, um, John's gospel demonstrates that the Spirit's role encompasses every aspect of life. In regard, regards to the world outside of Yeshua, the Holy Spirit works as the agent who convicts people of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That little inner voice inside of you is telling you. In order for a person to be saved, he or she must be born of the Spirit. This is what new birth is all about because God is a spirit. Those who worship him must do so spiritually. In other words, those who worship God must be directed to do so by the Holy Spirit. And believers are urged by the scriptures to receive the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us the power and ability to minister for Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the divine enabler for authoritative ministry. John reveals the function of the Holy Spirit in continu continuing the work of Yeshua, therefore leading believers into an understanding of the meanings, implications, and imperatives of the gospel. The Ruach HaKadosh enables believers to do greater works than those done by Yeshua. It is important that present-day believers view the Holy Spirit as their contemporary and God-sent helper and enabler and not merely as a figure from some distant past and a lot of people get this confused and they think that uh, you know this this is not relevant to today and it is very much relevant today because the Holy Spirit you are sealed by the Holy Spirit when you're born again and all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are available to us today and it's very relevant the suffering and death of Yeshua we see the suffering and death of Yeshua. After Yeshua prayed, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And here he was arrested, underwent several trials, was beaten, uh, then was crucified on a cross. And he did not try to delay or avoid any of these experiences. We see Yeshua on trial before Annas, the high priest. Um, that was the Jewish trial. And then we see Yeshua on trial before Pontius Pilate. 
the Roman trial. Next, Yeshua was dragged before Herod, another Roman trial. Um, and then Yeshua was tried by Pilate again. So Yeshua's identity was definitely um, stated in, in, in this book. And Yeshua's garments, the mother of Yeshua, the death of Yeshua, the death of Yeshua verified, and Yeshua's body was buried. And, and Nicodemus is also mentioned in chapter 19 of John. And John is the only one of the Gospels that recorded Yeshua's words, it is finished. On the third day, just as he had prophesied, Yeshua arose from the dead with a physical body. He later appeared 10 different times after his resurrection. On his seventh appearance, Yeshua appeared to Thomas, who had the privilege of placing his hand in Yeshua's wound, wounded body. And Yeshua's last words of instructions were to Simon Peter, and John recorded Yeshua saying, Yeshua said to him, if, if I will be that he tarry till he come, what is, what is that to you? Follow me. He, he, you know, he basically told him to follow him. Six major omissions in John's gospel we talked about um, before. Um, I am going to um, just mention them again. John did, John did not record a genealogy for Yeshua as Matthew and Luke did. And John did not give an account of the birth of Yeshua because Yeshua was, quote, in the beginning. John wrote nothing about the boyhood of Yeshua, wrote nothing about the temptation of Yeshua, wrote nothing about the transfiguration of Yeshua, and gave no account of the ascension of Yeshua and did not write about the Great Commission. However, John wrote the seven I M's, which we went over some last week. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Before Abraham was, I am, and I am the good shepherd. Those were from last week. And the I am's continue when Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. John challenges the readers to make a personal response to Yeshua. And we're going to do that with the altar call. And it calls for a positive response in faith. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One. John reminds us that Yeshua came that we might have life. Such life that Yeshua promised requires a personal response from people. As you go forth preaching and teaching the gospel, we need to encourage people of the important fact that they must make a personal response to Yeshua. Trust the Ruach HaKadosh to guide and direct you. And trust the Ruach HaKadosh to help people make the quality decision to receive Yeshua and remain steadfast to embrace him eternally. The Gospel of John also tells us that the napkin which was placed over the face of Yeshua was not just thrown aside like the other grave clothes. Um, so it wasn't just tossed aside like the other grave clothes. So as a specific custom, why did Yeshua fold the linen burial cloth after his resurrection? The Gospel of John tells us that the napkin which, which was placed over his face was not just thrown aside. Um, the Bible takes an entire verse to tell us that the napkin was neatly folded and was placed at the head of the stony coffin. And early um, Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Miriam of Magdala, Mary Magdalene, came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, the one whom Yeshua loved, and told them that they had taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and didn't know where they put him. And Peter and the other disciple, which was John, ran to the tomb to see. The other disciple outran Peter and got there first and leaned and looked inside, saw the linen cloth lying there, 
but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noted noted that the linen wrappings were lying there while the cloth that had covered Yeshua's head was folded up and lying to the side. Why is that important? It is important in order to understand um, the significance of this folded napkin. We need to go and understand a little bit about Hebrew tradition of that day. And he was giving them a symbol and, and letting them know. He was giving them a signal of that time. The folded napkin had to do with the master and servant. So, and every Jewish boy knew that um, in that day, what that signified. When the servant set the dinner table for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table was furnished perfectly, and then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating. And the servant would not touch the table until the master was finished. Now, if the master was finished eating, he would rise from the table, wipe his mouth, his fingers, clean, you know, clean himself up, and wad up the napkin and toss it onto the table. The servant would then know to clear the table. And the wadded napkin signified that he was finished. But if the master got up from the table, folded his napkin beside his plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because the folded napkin meant, I'm coming back. So let us be reminded um, that that Yeshua, that message, and they got it loud and clear, was, I'm coming back. And that is the end of this week's Bible study. Um, we're going to close with closing prayer, and then we will come back with a part four, which will be the altar call. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Yeshua. We thank you for how he taught and how the messages that he left for us. And we know that he is returning again. We thank you for everything that you have given us in this lesson. We thank you for the fact that Yeshua, you actually laid your life down. You gave of your very life, your body and your blood so that we could be redeemed. That was your final act um, while you were in the flesh for us, but then you also came back and showed us your resurrection, which gives us hope as well for that eternal life. We thank you for the message. We thank you. We honor you. We worship you, and we adore you. We love you, Father God, for giving us your one and only begotten Son, and we thank you, Yeshua. You are the King. You are coming again. You're coming back. That message is very loud and clear. You're coming back to rule and reign, and we wait. We wait patiently for you. We love you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen.